Hey everybody, this is John here again, Hometown Historian Channel. So, this is a very quick vlog, and actually it will be a quick vlog. Just two points. Uh, something I completely sort of forgot about when I was talking about stuff uh, with the channel in the uh, Country Roads Take Me Home that I put out earlier today from uh, Mount Gretna to Colebrook and then to Fontana. Uh, one, the get-together, which is the Millersburg Ferry uh, and Historical Association thing that we were going to do. I was hoping end of June, maybe middle of July at least, because it's one of those things that it is a seasonal thing, uh, but it also is one of those situations that's also contingent upon water levels of whether the ferry can run or not. So, as I was saying about like my surgery coming up, <laughs> I think the surgery is going to be around... I'm going to be in a cast starting next Thursday, two to three weeks, maybe even a month. So you're looking at either the beginning of July or second week of July that the surgery would be. I'm assuming it's going to probably take me at least two weeks to recover that I can maneuver enough that I could actually do an event like that. So this event right now is lim in limbo. I'm going to try to get a hold of them tomorrow. Talk to them a little bit about, let them know the situation, and then get their idea. Because I think they go past Labor Day, but I'm not sure. So it may we may wind up switching to another place for our first YouTuber meet and greet, and that's also contingent upon if this surgery works or not. Because if it doesn't come fall, I'm gonna be having another major surgery. So I really want to do this event. I'm really excited about it, but. It is one of those things that sort of up in the air right now. And I know you guys understand that, but I don't want to try to be making plans and say, okay, we're going to do this middle of July, and then it's not possible for me to do it. Uh, it just sort of is what it is right now. So I will keep you guys posted on that, and then we'll figure out what we're actually going to do with that event and go from there. Uh, the other thing that I was talking about, which once again, this is contingent upon uh, health and stuff like that, I'd really like to do this thing with the Shire of Black Rose, where it's the medieval bow shooting and axe throwing, bladed weapon type throwing. Uh, that, I think, is something that Cliff sounded very receptive to with the Wondering Woodsman channel. I think it's something Lewis would be very receptive to, to as well. So, once again, it's contingent upon it. It's only over in Elizabethtown, so it's not that far from where I am. Uh, or from Lewis or from Cliff. So that's something I think could happen at some point. It just depends on where I'm at and trying to set that up. So that's something we want to do for you guys. At some point, it's just a matter of figuring out through a couple of these events. I do not think I'm going to be able to do old anvil days unless there's a way for me to be dropped off. And I got to see how I'm feeling too. Because once I'm in a cast, I got to be in a, uh, a boot which I'll be in the contour boot for that, so it'll be a little bit easier for me to manage. I just don't know where I'm going to be health-wise by the 10th. Because uh, it's not next Saturday, but the Saturday after that. I'd really like to make it to that because it's another one of these events type thing. And I've talked to a couple different people about some other events as well. We'll see where I'm at when it comes to those events. It also depends on temperature. It's like that, how well I'm going to be able to handle that. But... Uh, I just wanted to give you guys an update on that as well, that I'm still thinking about that, um, and go from there. But i uh, probably have the uh, Gap video tomorrow, I think, because uh, I'm still, i got to get together with Josh tonight. We're going to go do uh, the uh, hardware store, take care of that, and uh, I'm going to get him to, there's a way to access your Google accounts, and that way I can get access to these videos that I filmed on a phone that I normally don't film on because the other one died. Um, just sort of is what it is. But if, as long as I can get access to those, then I'm going to get the second Lights Fort video, this part two, where I go into the history from Lebtown article and really goes into a couple unique things about that. Uh, and then do that second part where we went with Jan Morrissey on the north side of the building. And then there's going to be two Murray, Lindley Murray videos. First one is going to be just going through the school. Second one, I got to edit things around. Uh, there's an older gentleman there. I guess he was, I think he was the husband of the lady. They were the tour volunteers there. 
he started telling some pretty cool stories dealing with his time with H.B. HB Reefs. Also some cool stories about his schoolhouse that he went to and some of that, that he was only educated to the eighth grade. And that was sort of, that was common back in that time period that you didn't go beyond a certain grade because the family needed you to go out and work. So I think those are some cool stories of note. That would be nice to be able to hear uh, those hometown stories of the past. Uh, so that would be the second video of that for a total of five with the Historic uh, Preservation Trust of Lebanon County. And then uh, at some point, July or August, once again, once I get healthy, I will set up with Jan uh, Morrissey, who's the head of the Historic Preservation Trust of Lebanon County, to be able to get myself, Cliff, and Lewis into the Chestnut Street Log Cabin. And there's going to be an expert that meets us there that talks about the cabin itself, but also talks about the traditional gardens, because there's actually... There's a place in Anvil as well, which I'd like to visit because I think that was in the 70s when that got restored. But one of the ladies in that town went and bought the place and then took it upon herself to go in and restore it back to its original uh, 1700s look. And including uh, the gardens, which would be like a colonial garden of the Revolutionary War time period and stuff like that. So, And that would have also been... Uh, the look of most of those homes along Main Street, which back then would have been Market Street in Anvil, uh, that would be roughly what a lot of those houses would look like. As you got a little further along, say, the, the beginning of the 1800s, you would have started seeing two-story structures. And so I had that, that one home, uh, Cliff and I did the uh, video on uh, searching for history for his channel, The Wondering Woodsman where we were doing Anvil and there's that purple house where the guys were restoring it and you got to see the the straightened log uh, timbers that were put in there and it was a two-story home and that's just that's how they did them then you know the original ones were a lot of the Germanic which were like one and a half story and usually the half story up there was like the sleeping quarters uh, it's not like a traditional attic like we'd have today where we store all our junk uh, this was actually a useful uh, area of the house, and that's very much Chester Street log house. It's very similar uh, Germanic style, and that would have been what you know what would have been Stightstown at that time in Lebanon, before it became Lebanon. It was known as Stightstown, and uh, that's what the houses would have all. They would all each had their little plot, which is the size of what that Chester Street log house, uh, probably half acre. And they'd have their gardens in the back to grow their vegetables and whatnot to be able to feed themselves. And then they'd you know, be able to store them and that type of stuff for over winter and have food throughout that period of time. But uh, it will be cool to go and see that stuff. But it's just everything's going to be, I got to go get this x-ray. Uh, I got to go, I want to try to go tomorrow to get that x-ray, get that done. And then on Thursday, you're going to look at it. Go over everything with me and then proceed forward whether we just do the uh, lengthening of the different tendons loosening up is more a better term to just sort of give more, more maneuverability to the foot to sort of do the weight dispersal and then potentially there's two bones in there that i guess can be removed and are going to wind out um i guess pushing some of that weight to the right side of the foot where the other three toes are still there and the metatarsal is the bone that goes from your toe to your ankle. So if some of the weight can be dispersed out to there, it'll change things a little bit and then you have to start to worry about possibly charcoal I developed in the in the left foot. But, you know, it's it's a process and we'll see what happens and if ultimately it doesn't work then then we go to the more major surgery where no more toes, no more counting to 20 for John. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm preparing myself for it. But anyways, that's that's what's happening here. So I love the idea of the get-together, and I'm hoping we can do it. But I also am being realistic, and I want to share that with you. I always say these are going to be short, and then it doesn't. I mean, they're just short compared to most. But um, that's what's happening. Uh, it's just all going to depend on what happens the next couple of weeks. It depends on how quickly I heal. 
you know, hoping that this cellulitis is completely out of my system because I had 10 days of antibiotics, so it does feel like it's gone. But they got to look at that again and then decide to put the cast on next Thursday. And uh, it's been, with the other three times that it's healed, it's been about two to three weeks. Now, this is fully open. Like, it's not big. It's a very small thing, but... We'll see what happens. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking more towards the three, maybe even four weeks, that they're satisfied with where it's at. And then they want to get me a little further away from the bronchitis as well so my body continues to heal from that and further away from the antibiotics before they start slapping me in it uh, or going through surgery. Because that is concerning because you don't want to want to like put the body through more stresses than you need to. But that's, that's where we're at. A um, lot more videos to come. I've been getting out, doing some filming. I want to go out and do the Pennsylvania Historic Marker, uh, the Pennsylvania Chautauqua. I want to do that, the long form video of that. And that would be me going around to uh, the different neat things that are still there. Uh, maybe go a little more in a depth of Chautauqua is what they actually were. And take you know get you some pictures from the, when they were in their heyday, which would have been from the start about 1874, probably went into the mid 20s. By the time you reach the Great Depression, I don't think they would are going to be doing those anymore because people weren't so concerned about, hey, what can we explore in utopian science world and in the arts and literature and religion? They were more concerned with surviving at that stage. So, I think that was probably the death now. Chautauqua, Chautauqua's. So, but I want to go into that and show you some pictures of Lake Chautauqua. It's supposed to be really beautiful. Uh, makes sense that that would be the first one and everything would be named after that. And then we're going to go into the meaning of the word as well. So that'll be a longer vid. That will be one that I'll have to go back up to Mount Gretna to show you guys. And then I'll take you up to, I know exactly where Governor Dick is now, what road I had to take. So I'll go up there just to show you where they have all the trails I'm not attempting it. They do have a sightseeing tower up there. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing. It's just a big concrete structure. It's definitely something I can't do. So be be aware if you would ever want, and those of you that have done it will know, but Governor Dick Tower is pretty tight, and it's not big enough to have a staircase. It's actually a ladder. It takes you up to the next platform. A ladder takes you up to the next platform. I think they're each like eight-foot ladders, and it's like 65 feet high so I'm not real fond of tight spaces and they say the view is worth it though because you can see it's in Lebanon County but you can see like five different counties and it says it's really impressive what you can all see from up there because it's on a hill already and then the 65 extra feet off the top of that hill is pretty impressive I would like to talk about the history of that uh about the uh, gentleman who had been a former slave. He was an escaped slave. Uh, his name was Dick. And they used to call him because he was an extraordinary collier, which is the guys that make the charcoal for the iron furnaces and, you know, Cornwall's right down the road. And uh, he, they used to call him Governor, Governor, Governor Dick. He had that, that southern accent, Governor. So they call it, called it then in his honor, that hillside Governor Dick. Uh, but it's a really cool area. But anyways, so that's what's coming up uh, with the channel. Going a little more in detail, a couple of things I forgot in the video yesterday. Because I tried to get those all in there. And I, I kept on having people like right on my butt. And it was like, I had the one guy follow me from, it's from that, uh, I think it's 217. Which brings you out to almost to Fontana, the 322. And then you make a right on the 322. Going to 934. I went the whole way down through 934. And I think he almost followed me the whole way down to Ono. And he was just on my tail the whole time. And then he turned left. I turned right. So it's going to the Dollar General. But it was just like, that was driving me a little nuts. I don't... It just seems there's certain times, I don't know if there's a full moon. But it almost seems like people go nuts around that time. And just like the stuff that you like. The behavior, like the road behavior and just people's behavior in general is like, wow. Uh, sort of 
manners, mannerlessness like that it sort of bothers me a little bit. But anyways, uh, so we will uh, meet you in the next adventure. Uh, next adventure should be the Indian Town Gap Memorial for the 28th Infantry Division. Uh, it's a National Guard. Uh, they also have a lot of little cool monuments. There's a really cool one about, because a lot of times the mothers get forgotten and they're suffering, especially gold star mothers. And they have a poem there. It's really poignant. And, uh, it's one of those sites when you're looking at it, I think Kate might've said something and somebody else might have as well. It just, it takes you for a moment where you sort of take a step back and you're really, really thankful for everything you have because here here's a memorial to these folks who, who gave everything. And, and a lot of times we'll say, oh, for American freedom. And yes, but it really is impressive because they're willing to go and fight for somebody else's freedom that they don't know, that's across the seas, they have no relation to for the most part. It really takes a very special person to be willing to do that. And, uh, you know, these folks did that. I mean, we were fighting terrorism and all that kind of stuff, of course. But, uh, you know, we're very, very fortunate in this country. And when you go to something like that, and it just sort of, you see the name, it sort of hits home. And just something like that, like the Gold Star uh, Mother's Memorial that was there. It's something you don't think about a lot of times. And, and you'd really think is like, you know, the grieving doesn't end for them. You know, the American flag is given, you know, when my dad had passed, you know, and he was obviously 85 years old at the time, but they had the the 21 gun salute. And, uh, I have a friend, Eric, that does the, those shoots and really an honorable thing of him to do. And, you know, means a lot to him. And his dad's buried out at, uh, any town gap like mine is there's Sun national cemetery there, but, uh, that was, it was such an emotional moment, and then the bugle hits, and playing taps, and you're just like, you're done, and they, they, when they handed the flag to me, and it's like, you know, you don't know this person, but the, just the way they handle it with such class, and dignity, and honor, you know, on behalf of a grateful nation, and it just, boom, it hits you, and so like, on a memorial like that, it was one of those very chilling, um, somber, serene. Uh, it's sort of like when you go to the Gap Cemetery and you just go through all those graves of all these individuals that each person, each one of those crosses or flat stones like my dad has. Each of them has a thousand stories you can fill a book with. And it really is... It's a time for a reflection more than anything, but, uh, so that's what's coming up. Uh, I just got to do some editing. I got to do some audio work because I've learned in the past that it's best if you get a plaque, take a picture of it, <laughs> put it on my cap cut, cut editing, and then I read it off because, <laughs> uh, it doesn't always go well live, uh, but you can control everything when you do it that way and, so I got to do that part yet. And I also have uh, the 16th Pennsylvania Infantry, which was a National Guard base at the time, was in Mount Gretna. I have that as a short. At some point, I want to go and do a long-form video on that because it was really an impressive place there. And there isn't much left of that. And But they have that memorial. At one point, I, I believe they had a Pennsylvania historic marker just like yesterday, I went looking for, there's supposed to be a Pennsylvania historic marker somewhere in town Gap. It's supposed to be on Fisher Avenue and Quartermaster Road, right on the edge, like the corner there. Uh, it was talking about uh, Transportation Corps. And it has to do with, uh, they did their training back then. We, we talked about Marquette Lake. Well, Memorial Lake wasn't there yet, but Marquette Lake was specifically built uh, for training uh, for the landing craft, like you remember, um, Normandy, they'd bring those landing craft in. So they'd have, I got a chipmunk that is staring at me. I see you, buddy. He keeps on running away from my van. If I got chewed wires, I know who did it. <laughs> I 
But anyways, um, they had a trained landing craft, and there were a lot of African American soldiers that were trained there. Uh, so it has that African American aspect of African American history as well. And when they were here in the states, they were segregated. But obviously, then when they went into warfare, there was some segregation yet. But a lot of them, they were working right alongside uh, the white troops. And you know, it was one of those things. Is a lot of those people, it was their first time being around each other. And you know, but war had to, has a tendency to make you forget any barriers that you've had back home or wherever. And you just see that person as another human being who bleeds just like you, who loves just like you and has as much intelligence and courage as you, despite what has been said in the past. And it's, you know, it, it's, I'd like to do something on a historic marker to talk about the training that went on there. Cause it was a step forward, if you will, at that time. Uh, Cause you had, you know, the Jim Crow South and, it was bad up here in the north as well in that regard. So it's another aspect of history that I think needs to be remembered. And I don't know where the sign is. I mean, they, they have it on the Pennsylvania Historic Marker site. So that might even be something that, Laura, if you're watching this, maybe you could answer me that on that. I wouldn't even be surprised if it's over at the National Guard Museum. I didn't check that yet. I still got to go to there. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked if they moved it and like felt like that was a more appropriate place because where it had been, that's roughly, I think, where some of the training went on. But it was more the disembarkation, I think it was, because that's where they got on things to go over to the rail station in Lickdale. But because uh, a lot of that training would have went over on Marquette Lake, which is on the other side of Indiantown Gap on the western side. Uh, of the base premises because Indian Town Gap is a huge area because they have all their shooting ranges and ordnance ranges and all that kind of stuff. But uh, where the actual barracks and things like that, the physical, like what you would consider the base, uh, it was on the very western edge of that. But uh, who knows? We'll find that out. I mean, I've said in a number of videos where I'm like, you know, Hopefully we can return to this place, find out the information we're seeking, and have the questions answered that we're asking. And that's just part of going out seeking and researching and doing all that, and maybe if somebody has the answer to. So, But anyway, this wound up being a lot longer than I intended. And this is the second video for the day, but this is just sort of one of those things I wanted to put up to answer a couple other questions that I tended to answer and just completely forgot about. And as always, I like to talk and I ramble, 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 but uh, good things. It's just a matter of figuring out timetables and, you know, there's no way of knowing how quickly you're going to heal at any given time or how things are going to particularly work out. Or they look at the x-ray, they see something worse and they're like, well, we just got to go and do. I don't think that's the case because the foot feels reasonably good. It just, you know, I think he just wants to make sure that there's no damage to the big toe and the metatarsal there. That there's no osteomyelitis, that type of stuff. And just cover all their bases and look at what's the best path forward that will hopefully prevent this from being a continuing thing. Because we're not really getting anywhere. It's just as soon as it heals, it breaks down again. And that's sort of been my battle for almost the last four years now, coming up in middle of July. So we're only a month and a half away from it being four years that this has been going on. So I prefer to nip it in the bud and whatever path we got to move forward, we go and do. But uh, it's just letting you guys know that this is still heavily on my mind. I really, really want to do this Millersburg get-together because I think it'd be something that would be so cool. Not just a video for the first time for the channel because we did a little bit for Facebook at the very beginning of the channel. But really, just as a chance to get together youtube creators subscribers viewers i think it'd just be a fun event and there's a lot of really cool things in the area as well i just like the millersburg ferry to be the focal point uh the historical society hopefully will be able to get involved in some sort of way uh with the rail station um also maybe main street talking about the history of the town that type of stuff and then there's the ned smith art and nature center which is right there which is a phenomenal experience 
Ned Smith was a phenomenal wildlife artist, painter. Uh, he used to do the uh, Pennsylvania duck stamps and trout stamps, particularly the duck stamps. My dad absolutely loved him. He was one of my favorite, his favorite artists. I really liked him too. Um, and then for families, there's Lake Tobias, which is right down in Halifax, which is a really cool nature park with all kinds of animals. Really, really neat place to go for families. Uh, and there's also, there's like, I think three covered bridges in the area, a lot of good family restaurants in town. And then there's also uh, Fort Halifax Park, which not a ton there, but there's a couple cool nature trails, hiking trails. Uh, some neat stuff there as well. So I'll have to research a little more if there's any other things right in that area that to go for. But uh, I think it'd be a cool full day. And it also gives the option, like if people want to go off and they got a number of different things that they can go and do uh, and go from there. I just got to make sure I'm physically capable of, of doing what needs to be done to make an event like that a success and some sort of heading it up. Uh, and then like some of those other things, like I'm really sort of excited for that thing with Shire of, of Black Rose. <laughs> it just seems really cool. And Cliff and I had talked about too, we need to do the Renaissance Fair at some point. Take you guys there, the Mount Hope Estates there, uh, north of Mannheim. I think that would be another really cool event for to take you guys to. I think going to a number of these different, and then late fall they had like Cherry Festival and some other, they have some cool German festivals at Coleman's Park. They have a couple in, in historic Schaefer's Town. Uh, and then a couple other events that are in the area. Those ones I know, hopefully by that time, unless I have to get the big surgery, we should be able to go and do those together and have fun with that. And then hopefully if we are able to do Millersburg or another one, we can start trying to do one every three months or something like that, three or four months. And then just have, you know, one's in Allentown, one's down in Hanover, one's, you know, over in like Belfont in that region, like Lewistown, something like that. So we're going around the state to different places that we can go to. They're good for families, good for good access, that type of stuff. So we're not going to go try to, count, you know, climb Mount Everest or something like that, which I don't think any of us are probably going to be able to do. But, you know, sorry for doubting you guys, but not a good idea going up there unless you're a little nuts but uh anyway so thank you as always and uh sorry for the longer video wound up being i wanted to do something about eight minutes and blah 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 <laughs> so we'll see you guys and uh next journey and as always we'll see you all about town